Egypt and Ethiopia have been at odds for over a decade over Addis Ababa's plan to construct the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Egypt already faces issues with water security and fears these will worsen once the dam is constructed. Ethiopia sees the dam as vital to its economic modernization plans. Egyptian media has repeatedly raised the possibility of an airstrike on the Ethiopian dam to forcefully assert Cairo's claim to the water. This video will assess the outcome of a potential Egyptian strike. Egypt today fields the largest fighter fleet in Africa, although the vast majority is comprised of aging lightweight designs such as the J7, F-16 and Mirage 5. The low endurance and short range of Egyptian single-engine fighters and the lack of tankers for aerial refueling rules out participation in an offensive against Ethiopian targets. Egypt's air force is one of the largest in the world without an aerial refueling capability which seriously restricts its offensive options. Egypt has no heavyweight fighters, dedicated strike fighters or bombers. The country fields only two classes of recently acquired medium weight fighters, the Rafale and MiG-29M. These are Egypt's only fighters equipped with active radar guided missiles, other than the aging Mirage 2000 fielded in very small numbers. Operating from Egypt's southernmost airbase, these longer ranged fighters will be able to barely reach Ethiopian targets. Fortunately for Egypt, the dam is near Ethiopia's northern border and can be reached if the fighters use external fuel tanks. Reliance on bulky fuel tanks will undermine the fighters' flight performances and reduce the number of missiles they can carry. The distances involved mean Egyptian fighters cannot afford to loiter, and if forced to engage enemy fighters in the air, they could be prevented from reaching their targets. While Egypt deploys the Beech 1900 and C-130H for electronic intelligence and the MC-130J for electronic warfare, these lack the range needed to seriously participate in an attack. E-2 Hawkeyes may be able to provide some limited support but are also restricted by their short range. The airborne early warning aircraft can provide targeting data and help guide friendly missiles to their targets. The Rafale boasts more powerful sensors than any other Egyptian fighter and state-of-the-art electronics. Its maneuverability and altitude are unremarkable, however, and it's the slowest fighter in Egyptian service. The MiG-29M is Egypt's heaviest class of fighter and has considerable flight performance advantages over its other jets. The fighter benefits from a high speed and altitude, high maneuverability, advanced electronic warfare systems and access to Egypt's most advanced standoff missiles. Ethiopia's air force is considerably smaller but fields a far higher proportion of high-performance twin-engine fighters. The fleet deploys 12 MiG-23 ML third-generation swept-wing fighters which are primarily deployed in a stripe role. These are complemented by 14 Su-27 SK flanker heavyweight air superiority fighters. These are the only fighters between the two countries designed for a high-end air superiority role. In terms of flight performance, Ethiopia's Su-27 is overwhelmingly more capable than Egyptian jets. The aircraft have larger radars, longer ranges, higher weapons payloads and superior maneuverability. They are, however, the least advanced Su-27 variants in service and have seen only very modest upgrades, meaning their electronic warfare systems and sensors are far outmatched by the more modern MiGs and Rafales. Looking at the types of weapons deployed, the MiG-29M is the only fighter equipped with modern long-range air-to-air missiles. Its R-77 makes use of active radar guidance and has a 110km range. Ethiopian Su-27s have not been equipped with any post-Soviet air-to-air missile classes and rely on the aging R-27R. With the shorter range and lacking either modern electronic warfare countermeasures or active radar guidance, the missile's ability to threaten modern Egyptian fighters is seriously limited. Egypt's Rafale has not been equipped with Meteor missiles, leaving it reliant on the aging French Mika design with very limited capabilities. These have a similar range to the R-27 but benefit from more modern electronics and active radar guidance. Ethiopia's MiG-23 is considerably less capable in beyond visual range combat, with older sensors and shorter ranged R-23 missiles posing a negligible threat to Egyptian aircraft. Egypt thus appears to be at an advantage, although limited range means its fighters will be unable to loiter. The Su-27 will still retain a considerable advantage should it get within visual range, particularly over the Rafale which has a much poorer flight performance. Looking at Egyptian standoff missiles, the most capable by far is the KH-35 deployed by MiG-29M fighters. The missile has a 300km range and 145kg warhead. While developed for anti-shipping, it can be used against ground targets. Egyptian MiGs also deploy the KH-25MP, which carries a similar sized warhead but have a much shorter range. 
Egypt's Rafale fighters have been denied access to the scout radar evading cruise missile for political reasons and do not currently deploy any suitable standoff missiles. The French-built fighters can deploy laser-guided bombs, although this would require direct overflights of the dam which would strain their already limited range and expose them to enemy air defences. Ethiopia notably deploys a three-layered air defense network which can potentially threaten Egyptian fighters and intercept their missile attacks. These include the medium-ranged S-75 and short-ranged Panzer S and S-125 systems. Ethiopia has modernized its S-75 batteries with new electronic warfare countermeasures and deploys them from mobile tracked launch vehicles. This network has a considerable chance of intercepting Egyptian subsonic missile attacks. As Ethiopia is a landlocked nation, offensive operations by Egypt would likely require a violation of Sudanese airspace. Sudan's air force is considerably more modern and fields two MiG-29 squadrons armed with R-77 missiles. While not as modern as Egypt's MiG-29Ms, these aircraft can still pose a considerable threat at long ranges due to the sophistication of their missiles. Sudan has tended to side with Ethiopia and has the potential to derail any Egyptian attack plans. Ultimately, Egyptian aircraft barely retain the range needed to engage their target, and engaging Ethiopian air defences will only further strain fuel carriage. The outcome thus remains highly uncertain, with Egypt's ability to neutralise the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam questionable given the limited range of its fleet and lack of power projection assets. Looking to the future, Ethiopia is likely to seek to further strengthen its air defences with more capable fighters and surface-to-air missiles. The leading candidates for air defense modernization would be the Russian S-300 series, North Korean Pyongyang 5 and Chinese HQ-9, all boasting similar long-range capabilities. All have the potential to be serious game-changers. To modernize its air fleet, the most cost-effective option could be to modernize the Su-27 to the Su-27 SM-2 standard. This would include modern avionics and electronics and the Su-35's Airbus E radar. This would allow the Ethiopian jets to operate modern air-to-air -air missiles such as the R-77 and R-37M, which would provide a very considerable advantage over all serving Egyptian fighters. 